Welcome back to my channel guys. So today I have a new video for you and I'm going to be talking about things to do while you are in quarantine. I know a lot of cities are completely locked down right now. Like I think California as a state is locked down. I think there's a few, I don't even know. And already pretty much everything's shut down. We just have like takeout and grocery stores available to us. So I know a lot of people are in the homes right now. And even if your city's not locked down, stay your ass inside. Please stay home. Please do your part because I, like none of us wants this to last. I'm gonna talk about ways to practice mindfulness while in self-isolation. So obviously when you're home, you go crazy, you get bored. So obviously I know some people don't have an easy time staying at home and doing nothing because there are a lot of extroverts out there. There are a lot of people that just like to keep busy, like to do things, like to see people and I totally get that. I myself can't really relate to that because I'm an introvert, but I do have my days where I'm just kind of like, oh, I need to leave the house and see people because sometimes I'll be home for like seven days in a row and I'm like, okay, I'm kind of going crazy. So we're all gonna get there eventually. I think it'd be nice to talk about ways to practice mindfulness while you're home. Number one. I would say journaling is very important. This is because A, you're going through something that you're probably not gonna experience again in your lifetime, God willing. Another thing is you're able to keep track of your mental health during something a little traumatic and you're able to kind of get closer to yourself with the time that you have. A lot of people, their excuse for not journaling is because they don't have time and they have to get to work and they forget because they're tired and I, like they have all these reasons as to why they don't. I myself have had these reasons in the past. Because of my lifestyle, I'm able to do it twice a day because I'm home all the time. But if I wasn't, I would probably find a hard time making the time to journal. So you have the time right now. So take advantage of it, journal. Even if you're off for two weeks, two weeks of journaling is enough time to build that habit. And then maybe you'll prioritize it once you start working again and you start going to school again. You're gonna be like, you know what? It only takes me 15 minutes. I can wake up 15 minutes earlier once you realize the benefits that it has for you. So if you need some tips on journaling or whatever, I do have a video on it, which I hopefully will remember to link below. I'll try my hardest to remember. But yeah, journaling is super, super helpful and beneficial for your mental health. It helps me out so much. I journal at night for a little bit of time and I have like a whole nightly routine, but my journaling doesn't last that long. And then in the mornings is when I do like my mind dump and I journal my first thoughts of the day and what I kind of felt the night before and stuff like that. So do what you can, write your thoughts down, ask yourself some thought provoking questions that you haven't really thought about before and journal. The second one is, I know that a lot of us don't work out I don't work out. I jog, but like not often. And I think right now is a good time to keep our body warmed up and moving. So you could start stretching, maybe come up with a goal. Like for me, my goal is I want to learn the splits. So I'm finally starting to do my stretches again so that I can get the splits. I don't know if I'll be able to commit, but I'm going to use this time to, to do that. So maybe learn the splits, find a 20 minute stretching routine. I'm not saying work out, buy some freaking, what are they called? Weights. Um, I'm not saying you need to do the most, but I think that stretching is always nice. Like a nice YouTube page that has like a 20 minute yoga routine that for, that for beginners, I think will be really nice for you. So you can like make your cup of tea or coffee, drink that, do some stretches and start your day because you have the time. So you may as well practice that. Maybe you won't carry it into your daily routine once your life goes back to normal, but at least you can use this time to kind of better yourself and figure out if it's something that's worth putting into your routine. Number three is to be creative somehow, some way. Whether this means writing, drawing, filling in a coloring book, painting, you don't have to be good at it. You can literally, I, I suck at painting. I suck at painting. I'm not a good painter, but painting is so therapeutic. I don't know if your dollar stores are opened or closed, probably too late, but if you have painting materials, cause I, like, I got mine at the dollar store, go to town on painting, order on Amazon. If you don't paint, if it's too messy for you, draw. If that's too stressful for you, fill in a coloring book, just be creative in some way, stimulate your creative senses. I think that'll be really good for you. It's always fun. The other day I did like a little painting night with my friend and that was a lot of fun. So be creative, let your creative juices flow or whatever they say and have fun. Number four is learn something new. This can be anything anything at all. You can learn the basics of a language on YouTube. You can learn how to cook. You can learn how to bake. I'm a great, great, great cook. Chef, I should say. I'm a great chef. I, I can't bake for shit. I cannot bake for shit. If you know me, you know I do not like sweets. I don't like anything sweet. I don't fuck with chocolate. I don't fuck with any, I don't like any of that. So the other day I wanted chocolate chip cookies with like no chocolate chips. So like the only way I, can, <laughs> I hate chocolate. So like I put like four chocolate chips. 
I tried to make a batch of cookies and this is what happened. Did I have fun baking them? Yes. Was it therapeutic? Was it fun? Yeah. Was I a little bit annoyed at the results? Yeah, but like the cookies tasted okay. They were just a mess. So learn something new, bake. Oh, something I'm learning right now is tarot. I'm learning tarot. I have the time to watch the hour long videos and just practice that every morning through my routine that I always do. And that's fun. So find something that you're interested in that you've never really given the chance and learn how to do it. Even if you only get to the beginner level, that's okay. But making the effort to learn something new is always fun. Number five is to let yourself relax and enjoy content that is mindful. So what I mean by this is binging a series is always fun. Don't get me wrong. I just binged on my block. I binged Victoria's. I binge a lot of things lately. I don't know why, I never used to be a TV watcher. So what I'm saying is binge mindful content. So for example, if there's a YouTuber that you really like their stuff, but you don't have the time to watch them all the time, Binge their content. For me, I always mention her in my videos because I really love her content, Lior Alexandra. She has such amazing content on a lot of different topics that are so spiritual, mindful. They're just, she's just relaxing. I like Aaron Dowdy as well. I just recently started watching him. And Gaia has a lot of really cool spiritual shows and stuff like that. Um, so I think that binging on mindful content is good for you rather than watching like YouTube drama channels and Love Island and The Bachelor, which are fun, but you could start indulging in some content that's maybe a little better for you, your soul, your mental health and all that stuff. So you could do both. You could watch like an hour of mindful content a day and six hours of reality TV, but like, you know, just give yourself that chance to have something positive fed into your brain. Set social media limits. I understand that on a lockdown, you're not in communication with other people, so you're really only able to see what other people are up to through social media, and especially with every fucking person out there on live right now. <laughs> like, it's so easy to just be on Instagram for hours and TikTok for hours, and it's, it's fine, it's cool, but I would say set yourself some social media limits because it's very easy to get consumed in it and not realize that you just spent seven hours on TikTok when you could have spent some of those hours doing other things. It's just not good for you. Just because you're home and doing nothing doesn't mean you should spend 18 hours on TikTok and Instagram. It's just not, it's just not ideal. It also, with that comes a lot of talk about the virus and you might not even realize it, but it's just constantly being fed into your subconscious brain, which could trigger some panic, some anxiety that you just don't need. So try your hardest to really set yourself some social media limits. Maybe put a little reminder so that you only are on for four hours of the day. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a lot. Do I do that sometimes? Yes. But set that reminder so that it'll be like, okay, Ashley, Okay, it's been 17 hours, you should get off your phone now. So that you just kind of see it and you can choose what to do with that information. Number seven, do some guided meditations. They're great. Some of them are an hour long. Some of them are 10 minutes long. Some of them are 20 minutes. If you're bored and you're just sitting there like, what do I do? I've refreshed Instagram 18 times. I've done this, I've done that. Guided meditation. Go to your room, put your earphones in and listen to someone feed good information and positive affirmations into your brain. Michael Seeley, Lisa Beachy, I think her name is, Lior Alexandra, Aaron Dowdy, they all have great guided meditations. If you are working on overcoming social anxiety, if you're working on overcoming coming past trauma, depression, they have a, a topic for everything. So just look it up on YouTube and listen to it. You have the time to listen to it every day for 21 days. As they say, that's one of the ways to really, really get it fed into your brain. You can do it once a day for 21 days or however long this lockdown lasts. But I say take that time to practice some guided meditations. I mean, all you have to do is lie there. It's not like you have to do work. You just literally have to lie there and not fall asleep. Even if you fall asleep, they still work though. Number eight, clear out your technology. Empty out your camera roll, all the shit that you have in your phone from 2015 that you don't need anymore. Organize your apps, delete the apps you haven't touched. Clear out your emails. Open up all those DMs you've been ignoring. Go through all of your stuff on your phone and just clear that shit out. I feel like it'll make you feel better after and it's something that we've all been putting off. 
So I'm gonna probably do that. The, the pictures thing, I might not do the pictures because I really, I'm a picture hoarder. I have like 40,000 pictures on my phone. So I probably won't do it because I just feel like I, I'll go through it and I'll probably delete 200 and be like, I can't delete the rest. So delete what you can, but take the time to like do a little social media cleanse and a, and a phone cleanse or whatever it's called, technology cleanse. Number nine is cook. I know I mentioned this already is learn something new, but even if it's not new to you, just cook, cook. Try out new recipes. Have fucking fun in the kitchen. That is if you have groceries, because I don't know, sometimes you might have to get real creative. But cook something. It's so fun. You have the time to experiment. You have the time to have fun in the kitchen. And I say just cook something for you and your family or whoever you're with and have a great time. I cooked stew chicken today. It was like this Spanish stew chicken with frijoles and red pepper. I like winged the recipe entirely. I saw one video and I was like, okay, cool. I'll just like copy it, but I'll make it my own. And I completely made it my own and it was bomb. Number 10 is a short one, but now is the time to do that tea talks you've been wanting to do. You know those like detox teas and those cleanses? Those are good. I'm not saying you need to go buy teamy blends, which they're great, but I'm saying you can go to the store and buy those teas that just cleanse out your system because here's the thing. When you have a job and you have school, you can't do those because you're gonna wake up and you're going to detox and nobody has time for that in the morning. You do not have time to be completely emptying out your system, if you know what I mean, when you have work in 20 minutes and then you have to go to work and you're still not done emptying out your system. Like no one has the time for that. So you're off. Do that detox you've been wanting to do for a while. There's recipes online. Number 11 is get yourself cute. Do your hair, do your makeup, take care of yourself, do your nails, take some pictures, have some content ready for your Instagram or whatever it is. Get that content, why not? You have nothing better to do. May as well practice your makeup, do your hair, look all nice. You think I'm going anywhere today? No, does it look like I am? Yes. Take some pictures, feel good, have a good time by yourself. Do your nails, even though by the time you have to go back to work, they're probably gonna be done and you're gonna have to redo them. But I mean, feel good on the outside. It'll help you feel good on the inside as well. And yeah. Anyways, so those are some things to practice and to do during this quarantine and self-isolation time. I hope everyone's handling it well. If you are in a bad situation at home, I'm really, really sorry. I'll keep you in my prayers. I know that some people are kind of going through it right now and some people are living, they're like living their best life right now. For me, I feel like it's cool, it's fine. It, nothing's new to me. I feel the exact same. The only difference is like, I don't have the option to go like for shisha or for a quick bite with my friend or like any of that. It's just like, ah, oh, that kind of sucks, but it's not a big deal because it's not worth the risk of getting anything or transferring anything. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy and hopefully we all get through this really, really soon and we can all leave our houses again. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening, guys. I honestly, I cannot believe this is happening, but we'll make the best of it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.